So good afternoon, Richard, and good welcome afternoon. to our studio here in Ipswich, where we're um, putting together a series of films for what we've entitled Super Suffolk Suppliers. We'll be touching on the environmental side, how the, the company um, engage uh, with the local community, and some of this fascinating stuff that I've been privileged to find out about Campling. So, so put it all into context for us, Richard, and explain how you got involved and some of the history of the company. Okay, well, it's an opportune moment for this conversation, actually, because it's 20 years since I came to Suffolk uh, and we made the acquisition of Camplings, what was then the parent company in, in Cambridge. Uh, so over 20 years, we've seen quite a bit of growth. Uh, I was uh, reminding myself that at that point our turnover was about a million pounds and we're pushing now somewhere near 20. Uh, and uh, we've grown the business uh, in terms of sort of the number of pieces that we were doing. Uh, if you give it a sort of sense of scale, we're now at peak, we'll be doing half a million pieces a week, which is about 200 tonnes of linen, which is about six tonnes an hour sort of wow. processing through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you're processing it through, then you're also sort of shipping it around the county, uh, supplying the sort of business, hospitality and tourism in the area. The, the pieces, the pieces of linen that you launder are owned by Camplings, aren't they? Yes, so the, the model I say, if, uh, if I meet somebody new uh, at a dinner party, I will say that I'm in financial services. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say that is that uh, if we take on a new hotel customer, we give them 20, 30, 40,000 pounds worth of linen, and all we really want is a return on that investment. And sort of the washing and processing is a sort of a byproduct of that hire. So it's sort of a different twist to, to I guess, a business model. As, as, um, as companies become more and more aware of like social governance and, and um, anti-slavery laws and things like this, where do you source your linen from? Uh, well, li linen, funny enough, we, we've been discussing a lot recently, or textiles, I should say, yeah. um, because it's going to be the new plastic. Mm -hmm. um, there is a whole end of life problem addressing it, uh, and we're starting to look at garments and items that will have a passport on them, and we will be responsible for their end of life disposal. Right. Uh, and in order to do that, then you need to actually track its movement in and around uh, seeing customers, or if it's high-vis garments, you know, which user is, is, is using it and what they're doing with it, and they won't be able to chuck it in the bin, they'll have no. to return it. I've been lucky enough, to, you've taken me around, I think I've been twice now to Great Yarmouth, and uh, you, you, um, when I was there, somebody was, I think, putting in some heat capture uh, machinery, um, uh, or, or some other, latest technology um, which is, is always fascinating so you know seeing the screens and people saying right this is this is your work this is what you've got to do today this is what's left this is how many pieces you've done this hour yeah. and uh, um, and an awful lot of automation so cutting out the manual handling side of it yes there were there were sort of as we moved to the new factory that there were sort of several objectives we had one was to reduce our energy which easy we did um, but actually by doing that, uh, we were then able to sort of go further as and when finance is allowed, I think. Uh, and the other one was to reduce the amount of manual handling. So we talked about it in the old world that we used to touch each piece of linen 11 times and we got it down to three. Really? Wow. Uh, and in doing that, we also were very important to us that we were, there wasn't picking and twisting and turning. Uh, and that then allowed us actually to get better productivity and make a more pleasant workplace. Because ultimately we do have a lot of hourly played staff uh, and that is becoming more and more a difficult area to, to, to recruit a, a, and employ. Um, and so we were very conscious that the better we make it then we'll get the better quality staff and retain them. And I'm pleased to say that's worked. Yeah. So our, uh, our average sort of length of service is somewhere near 4.4, 4.5 years. Yeah, so. uh, and within that span, I've got people at 40 years. I've got one chap who joined at 16 and he's now uh, into, well into his 60s. Uh, and we have uh, quite a few families where we've sort of got three or four generations at the same time. So you've refined the art of um, purchasing, uh, designing and washing, cleaning items. So if a requirement came up like Sizewell, where they, they could have in year six or seven, 10,000 people working on site, all having to have PPE, work uniforms, and those working within the nuclear island, uh, uh, probably less PPE, but distinct uh, um, work overalls and things like this, which have to be re washed regularly. 
Is there any prospect of creating a, an on-site laundry at a site like that, so thereby cu cutting down carbon footprint and everything else? I, I think um, yes is a simple answer. Yes, yes. The, the challenge is around linen miles, yes, so, yes. so it's transporting that. Um, but the balance is always scale and energy reduction through scale and production mm. efficiency against smaller plants. Mm. Uh, and the reality, uh, a site like um, Sizewell, with a, say, I, I understand there may be 2,000 bed uh, village, uh, accommodation, city, accommodation yeah. uh, in, in reality that's a relatively small proportion of our overall capacity. Yes, yeah, yeah. So um, we would want to blend it in in the early days, but I think as time moved on, actually what you've got is, as you say, these spin-off opportunities uh, around the uh, PPE, which I think is going to be essential, uh, and the data management of that. Uh, and then the, the um, I guess the home clothes as well of the mm. uh, the workers and, mm. and invariably it'll be their sports kit and all, yes, all that yeah. sort of side yeah. and it feels if you're going to manage the water and the, the washing process then our understanding of how it works both in small scale and, and huge scale uh, is a good idea and, and, and we've already sort of got designs about creating what I would call a mini commercial laundry. Right okay okay. Companies now, uh, when you're submitting tenders and you're going for new work or you're trying to retain work, are often having to describe how you deliver social value um, on, on top of your commercial activities. Um, are there things that you do locally in Cambridge and Great Yarmouth in terms of that? Do you support any sort of s social project companies or charities? or? Uh, yes, um, in a sort of, sort of, I guess, a broad range of yes, sort of strange yeah. things. From one of the extreme end that I always like because it's cute and cuddly, but the, when they have um, uh, seal pups that get lost with the mother, they actually want all our old surplus towels. Oh, really? So right. we sort of, from that end, we go and find that for sea life. Yes, uh, uh, at, at the other end, uh, there was the sad cases of, of some of the homeless uh, in, um, in Great Yarmouth, and we were able to go along and support the the uh, um, effectively the laundrette and repairing the washing machines and provide right. spare surplus linen and, and, yeah. and duvets and things that, yeah. that come out at the other end. Yeah, uh, but I, I guess our, our main view is we're very conscious of our own workforce and they are a community in its own right. Uh, and, but we want to sort of encourage them to, to work together on that. So each year they choose the charities they want to support. And typically, uh, if they will have an event in a day, and what works well is bright coloured work. So if they were breast cancer day, they all love to wear pink sh shirts. And, and uh, last year we issued all the drivers with pink high-vis jackets. Uh, uh, but they had to pay two pounds to wear it for that day. Uh, and then as a business, we always sort of match fund that, that sort of support. So we find that sort of hits a lot, a lot of our, our ambitions in terms of getting our workforce to, to participate as well, but also them to, to go back and support the community. Mm. So in terms of, say, the, the next step forward, is there, a, is there an, a specific project? Or, I mean, you've mentioned before, you can uh, uh, grow by through acquisition, but it would seem that, that, that you've got everything under wraps internally. Is it, what, what is the next strategic step in terms um, of going forward. One of our biggest users of consumption is drying towels because fundamentally you just, ha you just have to tumble dry them. Um, but uh, this has always been driven historically in the industry by time, so it's a real push to time. And I'm saying is if, actually we've, if we take more time, uh, can we actually reduce the amount of gas we use? The benefit of our, our infrastructure, and, and we sort of bumped into it, and using a little bit of AI technology, is that we can predict the demand of when we want to, to take, take the next towel. And if we know that we don't need it for another five minutes, then we can dial down the gas consumption to actually reflect when we genuinely need the next product. Wow. Uh, and I think if we build this with a number of, of other sort of reworking old technologies, we can knock 30% off. Uh, our gas consumption, which Goodness would me. just blow the world away. Well, it would, wouldn't it? For, for, in our sector, I should say. So if we if we timed our next chat with you, Richard, in a year's time, following a board meeting in Cambridge... I might have to bring <laughs> the next generation to support the investment. Bring the next... It'll be fascinating to see how the company has progressed. So I've just got to say thank you very much for making all thank the effort you. to come and see us today. It's been much appreciated and um, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.